and uh, now i will invite dr safi kaskas he is an administrator in the managerial sciences with over 40 years of broad based uh, experience in strategic planning leadership and business ethics with an emphasis on uh, strategic management in the corporate and uh, academic world dr kaskas has studied abrahamic religions and lectured throughout the us on subjects related to islam the development of american muslims and the future of islam in us uh, with the study of the early followers of jesus uh, and the development of the early church he became a regular invited speaker at universities colleges and churches and many more so i will i cannot complete that that list instead i will ask him to please uh, take the mic mic from me and enlighten us with your speech الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear brothers I uh, am invited to speak about the sciences of Ramadan of fasting uh, I would speak generally about my feelings uh, concerning Ramadan and what I see uh, while we all fast. I'll start with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said in the Quran about Ramadan. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum. La'allakum tattaqoon. This is Al-Baqarah 183. Believers, God commanded fasting for you just as he commanded it for those before you so that you might be mindful of God. The Quran states that fasting was prescribed for believers so that they may be conscious of God. In my book, believers are all those who believe in uh, one creator to this universe. So this verse is addressing all of them. And sure enough, all believers I know of do fasting, although they don't fast at the same time as we do. But this year we are all blessed because everybody is participating in fasting at the same time. So it's a joyous occasion, an occasion for us to celebrate, an occasion for us to welcome each other, embrace each other, and break fast with each other whenever that is possible. Uh, by abstaining from things that people tend to take for granted, such as, as water, it is believed one may be moved to reflect on the purpose of life and grow closer to the creator and sustainer of all existence. Uh, the Quran asks us to always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. And the uh, uh, Bible uh, asks us to count our blessings. Actually, uh, they're beyond our ability to count. So if we want to welcome this month of fasting as Muslims, I would like to ask myself and each one of you, are we thankful enough for the blessings of Allah? We are surrounded actually with blessings. The simplest and easiest blessing for us all to reflect on is our ability to breathe this air that we are breathing. Allah made, the, for instance, air available to all of us wherever we are. But Although we cannot live without air, we, can, we cannot also live without water. But we need to go and get water, while air, which is more important, is readily available to us. And in my mind, we shouldn't take that for granted. It's there for us from the minute we are born. But still, we need to give it deep thoughts, and we need to be very grateful for it. So during this month of Ramadan, although we're abstaining from food and we are not eating or drinking from sunrise to sunset, we also need to be very grateful for our ability to fast because not everybody is able to fast. Although some people consider 
fasting uh, deprivation from food and drinks, I think we ought to be thankful for our ability to fast if we are able to fast, because this is a great blessing that subscribe to us in the Quran as a mean for us to purify our, our souls and bodies and to be God conscious. The purpose of fasting is not to just be hungry and thirsty. According to the Quran, it is taqwa. Taqwa is being conscious of God. Being conscious of God means that we are aware that God is with us closer to us than our jugular veins, day and night, every minute of the day. So although we thank God through prayers, through kindness to others, through asking forgiveness, and through forgiving others, we need to also share food and share our wealth. These are but simple issues that all Muslims are aware of for the month of Ramadan. What I like to do is go a little bit deeper with this and talk to you about a Muslim in general, how they can prepare themselves in the Ramadan to live the rest of the year. And personally, see anybody who claimed to be a Muslim is a mission-oriented person. A mission-oriented person, that means someone who is here on this planet because he, he has a particular mission to accomplish. That mission is two part. The first part for a Muslim is to do tazkiyah or self-improvement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا This is in Surah Al-Shams, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. Allah here is talking about our nafs, our self, our ego, and saying that he's telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that particular self both ways, either to go astray or to have taqwa, to have, to have consciousness of God, either to be self-centered, selfish, or to be selfless, directing itself in everything it does toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have two paths to follow, all humanity, all human beings, regardless what they call themselves, they are all prepared, created with the same faculties, same abilities. And in my own mind, they are created in a perfect way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't create seconds, always create perfect human beings. Part of our perfection is we sin, we make mistakes, we make wrong decisions, but we, we, he gave us the ability to recognize that we made a mistake, that we sinned, and we made the wrong decision, so we can repent and ask him forgiveness. The month of Ramadan is a whole month where we are contemplating what we've done earlier in our life, making sure in the evening we are better people than we were in the morning. This is tazkiyah. Every day, each one of us should ask themselves, Am I better today than what I was yesterday? And every evening, after iftar, ask yourself, am I a better person today than I was in the morning? It's a continuous process of reinventing yourself to build a better, a better copy of who you are, a better, a better version of who you are. Every day you have that opportunity, not only in Ramadan, in Ramadan, it's intensified, but you can do it throughout the year by asking ourselves this question. Then we are consciously, on purpose, trying to enhance who we are in order to become better people. Because the, our, the purpose of our existence on this planet is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see us working hard, purifying ourselves in order to join him and be in the hereafter permanently with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his, in his jannah, in his heaven. 
So Tazkiyah is the first task of a Muslim with a mission. And then his second task is to look around and try to spread these same values, these same virtues with the people who are around him, starting with his household and then moving to the neighbors and to the neighborhood. If you are like me, a Muslim in the United States, all my neighbors are either Christians or Jews. If I don't have a measurable enhancement of the neighborhood, then my existence here is useless. The neighbors need to feel that I am here and they are blessed by having me around. And I need to feel blessed that they are here so I can try to be kind to them and accept their kindness toward me. We are, we are all equal in the, in the eyes of God as a human being. The best among us is the most beneficial to others, as we were told by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a Muslim with a mission is someone that, had, that do tazkiyah of himself all the time, purify himself, make himself every day a better version of who, of who he is, and then try to spread the goodness and try to improve the society around him. This is the way I see uh, uh, the, the, our, our task. Tazkiyah and Islah. Tazkiyah is personal. Islah is for everybody around me. So this is my mission. And uh, this is what we all should be striving to do uh, as we fast this Ramadan. Then there are other, other things we need to be doing in order for Ramadan to be effective and a changing power in our life. We need to, uh, we, we do five prayers a day. We need uh, in Ramadan to make these prayers count by being more pious, more focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by being uh, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being conscious of his existence with us all the time and by being uh, good worshippers by asking Allah all the time for forgiveness and for what is good for us our neighbors and this world a Muslim is someone who is by definition a peacemaker Muslim is from the root salam Seen Lam Mim. It's from the same root as Islam. Islam means the act of being in peace with Allah by surrendering your will to His will. On your own, you should be known as a peacemaker among your friends and in the neighborhood you live in. You spread peace by spreading love. You're spreading peace and love by being kind to everybody, by treating everybody the way you like to be treated. While doing this, you're doing it not necessarily because you are attached to this world, but because you aim to please Allah who created you. The creator wants you to love him. And the way you can love him is very simple. By loving what he created, what he made you conscious of. And I'm conscious of uh, myself as a separate being and the rest around me, which is the which is my family, my neighbors, uh, the trees around me, the birds, and uh, uh, everything that Allah created, so I can be thankful to him. Even if we are uh, tried with a catastrophe, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not necessarily punishing anyone with the catastrophe. He's simply watching our reaction to what he did. If we are still thankful to him, believing that what he did is for the best, being thankful to him and always practicing uh, loving him and loving uh, his, cre his, his crea creations, then we are accomplishing the purpose of our existence on this earth. So we thank Allah, we are grateful to him while we are fasting through our prayers, through asking him all the time. He loves for us to ask him to repent and to ask. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for whatever comes to your mind. Ask that Allah bless 
you, yourself, your family, your neighbors, and this whole, this whole world. Uh, ask for peace in the world. We are living in a world that is always threatened by greedy people, people who like to benefit from wars, people who like to sell weapons to other people, and people who would like to, uh, uh, you know, abuse others. We need to pray for these people that Allah will enlighten their heart, will make them believers in him, to believe in his peace, to bring his peace to their heart, which is a very special peace. This way that we can have peace within and without. And that's very important. It's an important task of our prayers. We pray for a purpose, to recognize that Allah is our creator and to, to, to repent, to ask for forgiveness and to ask for, for what is good for everybody. Plenty of good for everybody. Also, being a Muslim fasting in Ramadan. It's not only the lack of food or our inability to drink that counts. It's how kind we are to ourselves and to others. What I described to you so far has to do with how kind I can be to myself. But kindness to others is very essential. Uh, for instance, there are some obligatory kindness that you have to be engaged in. Your father and your mother, if they are alive, what a blessing this is. You need to go every day and ask them for their forgiveness and to, to, to show your love to them and ask them to love you back and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will grant you Jannah. You have to be sure that they are pleased with you. Their pleasure is from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the people that we need to focus on to start with because, you know, the Prophet said, al awla bil -ma'ruf. And personally, see anybody who claim to be a Muslim is a mission-oriented person. A mission-oriented person, that means someone who is here on this planet because he, he has a particular mission to accomplish. That mission is two part. The first part for a Muslim is to do tazkiyah or self-improvement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا This is in Surah Al-Shams, verse 7, 8, 9, and 10. Allah here is talking about our nafs, our self, our ego, and saying that he's telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, gave that particular self both ways, either to go astray or to have taqwa, to have, to have consciousness of God, either to be self-centered, selfish, or to be selfless, directing itself in everything it does toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have two paths to follow. All humanity, all human beings, regardless what they call themselves, they are all prepared, created with the same faculties, same abilities. And in my own mind, they are created in a perfect way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't create seconds, always create perfect, human beings. Part of our perfection is we sin, we make mistakes, we make wrong decisions, but we, we, he gave us the ability to recognize that we made a mistake, that we sin, and we made the wrong decision, so we can repent and ask him forgiveness. The month of Ramadan is a whole month where we are contemplating what we've done earlier in our life, making sure in the evening we are better people than we were in the morning. This is tazkiyah. Every day, each one of us should ask themselves, am I better today than what I was yesterday? And every evening, after iftar, ask yourself, am I a better person today than I was in the morning? It's a continuous process 
of reinventing yourself to build a better a better copy of who you are a better a better version of who you are every day you have that opportunity not only in ramadan in ramadan it's intensified but you can do it throughout the year by asking ourselves this question then we are consciously on purpose trying to enhance who we are in order to become better people because the, our the purpose of our existence on this planet is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see us working hard purifying ourselves in order to join him and be in the hereafter permanently with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his in his jannah in his heaven so tazkiyah is the first task of a muslim with a mission and then his second task is to look around and try to spread these same values these same virtues with the people who are around him starting with his household and then moving to the neighbors and to the neighborhood if you are like me a muslim in the united states all my neighbors are either christians or jews if i don't have a measurable enhancement of the neighborhood then my existence here is useless the neighbors need to feel that i am here and they are blessed by having me around and i need to feel blessed that they are here so i can try to be kind to them and accept their kindness toward me we are we are all equal in the, in the eyes of god as a human being the best among us is the most beneficial to others as we were told by our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so a muslim with a mission is someone that ha- that do tazkiyah of himself all the time purify himself make himself every day a better version of who of who he is and then try to spread the goodness and try to improve the society around him this is the way i see uh, uh, the, the our our task tazkiyah and islah tazkiyah is personal islah is for everybody around me so this is my mission and uh, this is what we all stri- should be striving to do uh, as we fast this ramadan then there are other other things we need to be doing in order for ramadan to be effective and a changing power in our life we need to uh, we we do five prayers a day we need uh, in ramadan to make these prayers count by being more pious more focused on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being uh, devoted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being conscious of his existence with us all the time and by being uh, good worshipers by asking allah all the time for forgiveness and for what is good for us our neighbors and this world a muslim is someone who is by definition a peacemaker muslim is from the root salam seen lam mim it's from the same root as islam islam means the act of being in peace with allah by surrendering your will to his will on your own you should be known as a peacemaker among your friends and in the neighborhood you you live in you spread peace by spreading love you spreading peace and love by being kind to everybody by treating everybody the way you like to be treated while doing this you're doing it not necessarily because you are attached to this world but because you aim to please allah who created you the creator wants you to love him and the way you can love him is very simple by loving what he created what he made you conscious of and i'm conscious of uh, myself as a separate being and the rest around me which is the which is my family my neighbors uh, the trees around me the birds and uh, uh, everything that allah created so i can be thankful to him even if we are uh, tried with a catastrophe uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is not necessarily punishing anyone with the catastrophe. He's simply watching our reaction to what he did. If we are still thankful to him, believing that what he did is for the best, being thankful to him and always practicing uh, loving him and loving uh, his, cre his, his crea creations, then we are accomplishing the purpose of our existence on this earth. So we thank Allah, be, we are grateful to him while we are fasting through our prayers, through asking him all the time. He loves for us to ask him to repent and to ask, ask for forgiveness. As for whatever comes to your mind, ask that Allah bless you, yourself, your family, your neighbors, and this whole, this whole world. Uh, ask for peace in the world. We are living in a world that is always threatened by greedy people, people who like to benefit from wars, people who like to sell weapons to other people, and people who would like to uh, uh, you know, abuse others. We need to pray for these people that Allah will enlighten their heart, will make them believers in him, to believe in his peace, to bring his peace to their heart, which is a very special peace. This way that we can have peace within and without. And that's very important. It's an important task of our prayers. We pray for a purpose, to recognize that Allah is our creator and to, to, to repent to ask for forgiveness and to ask for, for what is good for everybody. Plenty of good for everybody. Also being a Muslim fasting in Ramadan. It's not only the lack of food or our inability to drink that counts. It's how kind we are to ourselves and to others. What I described to you so far has to do with how kind I can be to myself. But kindness to others is very essential. Uh, for instance, there are some obligatory kindness that you have to be engaged in. Your father and your mother, if they are alive, what a blessing this is. You need to go every day and ask them for their forgiveness and to, to, to show your love to them and ask them to love you back and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will grant you Jannah. You have to be sure that they are pleased with you. Their pleasure is from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the people that we need to focus on to start with. Because, you know, the Prophet said, Al -aqrabuna awla bil Rather, actually, there is no end to uh, talking about uh, Ramadan and uh, uh, its blessings for all of us, but I will try to conclude very shortly. <clears throat> so kindness to others is trying not to get upset with people who are trying to upset you. If someone get in your way, give them the way, that's okay. If you're driving and somebody cut you, allow them and uh, pray for them. Pray for everybody. This is how we show kindness to others, sharing our wealth with others, inviting people to iftar, with us during Ramadan. Try, try, to, try to have as many people eating with you as possible. There is a tremendous blessings in breaking bread with your friends and neighbors. It's a tremendous blessing. And no one knows this as much as those who are practicing it. Uh, this is basically what Ramadan is to me. And I hope that Ramadan will be blessed for you, for each one of you and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your fasting and all your good deeds for his own pleasure. Thank you very much for this opportunity.